Guys, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Because if you checked your phone at all in the past few days, you know that things are getting spicy in the crypto markets. Bitcoin just hit a new all-time high. Altcoins are breaking out. So what the heck is going on? Well, that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video today. I'm going to explain exactly what's happening, what's fueling this rally, and where prices could be headed in the months ahead. I'm going to break all this down from the perspective of someone who actually works this technology every single day, not just somebody watching from the sidelines. So if you're on here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. I'm a blockchain developer and educator, and this is where we talk about the real side of crypto, the tech, the trends, and how to get ahead. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And if you want to see how to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer, I can show you how to do that step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Let's talk about why Bitcoin just broke its all-time high and why altcoins are pumping and what could be coming next. So obviously, I have to issue this quick disclaimer before we move in. This is not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just a guy on the internet with opinions, some coffee, and a keyboard. This video is for educational entertainment purposes only, which means if you mortgage your house to buy a meme coin and it tanks, that's on you, my friend. All right, so why is this happening? Why is Bitcoin breaking out to new all-time highs while the rest of the world still thinks that crypto is dead? Well, let's actually start with the obvious answer. Nobody actually knows. Markets are emotional, narratives are messy, and sometimes numbers just go up. But since we can't really end the video there, let's actually look at some plausible explanations. You know, the ones that people use to sound smart on Twitter. So plausible explanation number one. Bitcoin hits its new all-time high above $120,000 as U.S. lawmakers begin crypto week. So really, I'm not really sure what Crypto Week's got to do with this, but I want to look at a bigger picture behind the scenes, which is spot ETFs. And I actually do think that there's something to this. I'm not just trying to be funny here. If you're not familiar with ETFs, that just stands for Exchange Traded Fund. This is basically a way to buy Bitcoin through a traditional account, kind of like you buy stocks in a brokerage account or something like that. This gives normal people access to crypto beyond just buying it on some sort of exchange that they don't trust, but not just for normal people. Like it actually lets institutions and bigger money players get exposure to crypto through this type of vehicle. So basically, you can actually track the inflows of ETFs since they went live. You can see all the different ETFs listed here. And if you look at the most recent data, like on farside.co.uk, but if you actually look at the most recent numbers, the last two months of inflows showed significant records. So what could that possibly mean? Well, institutional money is finally pouring in through approved channels. Wall Street got its hand on Bitcoin, and now they're treating it like a shiny new toy, and they want to sell it to you at a premium. All right, so next let's talk about liquidity and rate cuts. All right, so, you know, the big thing that really popped the bubble at the end of 2021, not just in crypto, but across the entire economy, were interest rates, okay? Basically... We pulled this massive lever and just ran into a wall. Interest rates basically skyrocketed overnight. And the economy has basically been limping along ever since then. And there hasn't been a lot of liquidity going around to buy things like crypto. That's a huge factor that moves the needle. Now, we've been in a higher rate environment for quite some time to try to bring inflation back down. And we're starting to think that, you know, maybe there's the potential for rates to actually go down in the not too distant future. And if they do, then that could really pour fire on crypto. That's exactly what happened back in 2020, 2021. And if this happens and rate cuts maybe come down, you know, keyword maybe, if inflation's coming down, then really you have a potential recipe for a perfect storm where everybody's just feeling risky enough to yellow back into crypto. And we might be just getting the early taste of that right now. All right, so one of the next big factors with Bitcoin in particular is simple supply and demand economics. Basically, when you have something that has a limited supply and there's people want it and there's less of it on the market, if the demand just stays the same, then the price of that thing goes up. Basically, if there's less Bitcoin for sale and the demand has not gone down at all, the price is going to increase. It's just like a law of nature. So obviously, if Bitcoin is a scarce asset, there will only ever be 21 million units of Bitcoin ever. All right. But we're not even to that number yet. And what you really have to talk about is the circulating supply of Bitcoin and also the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges. So basically, we've got a real problem right now. You know, words are getting out. Wall Street starts to start, wants to start selling Bitcoin and less and less Bitcoin is for sale because when you have things like ETF products, they actually have to go out onto the market and buy physical Bitcoins for these derivative products. And if people are like, nah, bro, I'm going to hold my Bitcoin. We're in a bull market. 
then that becomes this sort of auto catalytic feedback loop. Unless of course this is all already priced in, which everyone says every cycle, and then the price still goes up. All right, so the last major reason I'm gonna talk about really is just the charts. All right, so we are unfortunately gonna have to look at some charts here. We're gonna have to do some actual astrology, everyone's favorite topic in crypto. So I wanna first start by looking at the total crypto market cap, okay? So basically if you look at, you know, the amount of all the crypto that's worth out there, all right, we are basically approaching an all-time high, all right? A lot of that's got to do with Bitcoin, but there's another chart that's very similar that I think is causing some of the hype that can turn to a self-fulfilling prophecy, which is altcoins. Because let's be for real, most people don't care about Bitcoin. They want to own something else that's going to go up 10, 20, 100,000 X, all right? And those things, unless they're in some tiny little hot pocket, don't stand a chance if the entire total crypto market cap number three, the one that excludes like Bitcoin, Ethereum and all that other stuff doesn't look so hot. All right. But what we see here is total number three looks like it's starting to break out potentially from the resistance it's faced, which could mean we're in the next phase, maybe even the final phase of this bull market. And if this thing breaks out, then you might want to hold on to your butts. And that leads finally to FOMO. Okay. Which is really the last point. I think I might've said the last one a minute ago, but this really is the last reason. So basically, fear of missing out. It can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. All it takes is a few green candles, a spike of CNBC airtime, and suddenly, you know, your cousin who bought the top in 2021 is finally texting you again. And just like that, the game of musical chairs begins, all right? Everybody's sprinting for the same few exits. The candles get taller. The tweets get louder. The influencers get smugger. It goes on harder and harder until the music stops. Then people lose their shirts, the rest walk away, technically in profit, but spiritually hollow because they sold it at 3x, watch their buddy ride his up 30x, post a victory selfie with laser eyes and a Lambo emoji. All the while, he is like staring at the screenshot of his former glory in his portfolio all time high, like deeply depressed. That's how it always goes. I don't make the rules. That's how the game's played. Just make sure you know which one you're playing. So yeah, there's reasons, real ones, narrative ones. Maybe some are completely made up. But the truth is this market runs on a mix of logic, liquidity, and just enough delusion to keep things interesting. All right, now into the segment that everybody's waiting for, which is how high can the price go? <laughs> All right, so let's start off with daddy Bitcoin. So obviously we got to think about this in terms of probability. There's gonna be multiple levels, multiple different outcomes. Everybody from like, grandma conservative all the way to like the absolute moon boy you know we're talking about the guy who says the dollar is fiat trash unironically has got laser eyes on their linkedin and their driver's license thinks that bitcoin is going to be a million dollars by the end of this year because you know the system is collapsing but let's kind of like get things down to reality all right so if etf inflows continue then i think it's very reasonable to see like one hundred fifty thousand dollars to two hundred thousand dollar bitcoin the next level up would be like two hundred fifty thousand plus somewhere between two hundred fifty thousand and five hundred thousand but i would say like we'd have to have some stuff like liquidity euphoria and pal on the turntable like djing rate cuts and anything honestly beyond like three hundred fifty thousand dollars per bitcoin really is a moon boy target in my view all right so next up on the chopping block is everybody's favorite punching bag ethereum now obviously if you watch my channel for any length of time you know that i've been a long time holder of ethereum i'm in just as much pain as you are but i obviously believe in this thing for the long term eth is lagging but i don't think it's cooked for this bull market i do think that there's significant price targets okay so like you know, the moon boys, their base case for Ethereum is going to be like $10,000 per coin and $20,000 plus per coin if we, you know, tokenize the entire world like tomorrow. All right. Now, again, I don't think these things are never going to happen. It's just how fast are they going to happen? So, you know, some more grounded targets might be somewhere between the five and $10,000 range per coin. And the absolute like conservative grandma target, assuming that the world doesn't collapse and the party ends tomorrow is like, basically just going right past its prior all-time high and even some slight gains from there before you know we enter into some prolonged bear market all right so next up is solana so what are some price targets for this well obviously you know the moon boys are going to call for something like a thousand dollars per coin i think anything north of five hundred dollars per coin is starting to get pretty ambitious the thing you have to understand about solana is if you go look at the market cap all right, versus the price, it's had quite a bit of inflation, basically more coins that hit the market. And so that puts a lot of downward pressure on the price relative to what the market cap is. I mean, go look at the price back in 2021, what the market cap was. And then now look at the price here. It was the exact same thing, but the market cap was way higher. So basically 
it had a lot more buy pressure, but it didn't quite go up as high in terms of actual unit price, like price per coin. And so for that reason, Seoul's got a lot of headroom in it to reach these massive price targets that everybody thinks about who doesn't understand basic tokenomics. All right, so that's an overview of like why this is potentially happening. What are some plausible takes on this? What are some potential price targets? Okay, but what are my actual opinions on this matter? Okay, so I really think this. So we have to zoom out. What we're seeing right now is probably phase two of this cycle. All right, Bitcoin runs first, Ethereum starts to catch up, and then the altcoin crowd wakes up. Despite everyone thinking the playbook's totally changed, which it has, but it still rhymes with the old playbook because, you know, human nature just doesn't really change that much. Because when we're in this late phase, that's when the meme coin casino kicks into overdrive. It's been happening in pockets, but not across the board yet. And, you know, people are going to try to figure out the order of operations so they can chase all the pumps. But guess what? You don't have to. All right. This cycle is weird. It doesn't feel like 2017. It doesn't feel like 2021. Maybe the four year cycle is breaking down. Maybe it's just a slower burn. Maybe we extend upside into 2025 and maybe it fizzles out sooner than everyone expects. And maybe the returns are diminished. But it's possible that the market just looks different now. The more institutional money, more regulation, and more mainstream adoption is here. But my point is, this is not just a hype cycle. This is the real thing. And you've got to know what game you're playing. Because at the end of the day, the people who win aren't the ones who just FOMO in at the top. They're the ones who understand timing, positioning, and when to walk away with a W. And that's exactly what I want to help you do on this channel. So whether you're brand new to crypto or you've been here since Mt. Gox, this moment, this cycle, this attention, this is not just about making a quick flip. This is really good news if you're investing in this technology like I teach you on this channel because when prices pump, you know, headlines fly. When headlines fly, attention follows. And the attention means demand. And demand for the industry, the infrastructure, and talent, which means more demand for blockchain developers which is exactly what I teach you on this channel. So if you're trying to get a job in crypto, you want to work with this tech and not just speculate on it, or if you want to build your own trading bot, launch your own app, whatever it is, this is your moment. You should absolutely be watching prices, but not just to FOMO into new coins. You should be investing in yourself because you can control that. And as demand heats up, so do opportunities for people who actually understand how this stuff works. And so if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below, subscribe to the channel. You can see all my free courses pinned to my YouTube homepage. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you to become a blockchain master step-by-step start to finish and increase your income over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So that's all I've got. Thanks for watching and I'll see you inside.